actually going to paint in, strangely enough, a, a little a literal light source in here. So that I, I basically want to gauge the lightest light. Very quickly in your paintings, you want to gauge the lightest light and the darkest dark. So basically so that you don't go too dark in the places that shouldn't be the darkest. So you don't, you don't want to go too dark. So if you've got your darkest dark there, you know not to go anywhere close to that that isn't the darkest part of the painting. So I'm going to set my lightest light at the moment. And I'm not going to use pure white. I am going to use titanium white. I'm also going to use impasto medium because I'm going to lay it on pretty thick. I want it to be opaque. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to that because it is a warm light source. Um, but it is the lightest light, so I don't need to add much. A stark white would, would look too cool in a light source like this. I'm just going to have a, a light peeking through here. One stroke's enough, don't do two. I've <laughs> <laughs> well, the bit. I, well, not in every style of painting, but the style that I, I like to keep things loose and things like that. And, you know, if you can describe something in two, if I do three, four, five. That's what I do with them dusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not too worried about the depth of colour because there's going to be a glazing layer that really makes the colour vibrant, so I'm going to set in my darkest dark, and it's going to be the foreground, and I need to decipher whether I want a warm foreground or a cool foreground. And what I probably want to do is set a cool-ish foreground, a really cool foreground. It's going to be really cool, but it's, it's, going, to be <laughs> it's going to be cold, but uh, I'm going to have a, an eye to later warm that cool colour by adding some sort of halation and, and a little bit of uh, picking up on the warm. Uh, so I'm going to create a black. Okay, just judge the colour. Okay. Okay. It's a rocky foreground, but what happened looking into a light source and you've got a really dark foreground and you've got some uh, reflections this is just going to appear broken up whoop that's crazy but I think I'll leave that nice in this stage of a painting I just like to get colour on the canvas and then move it about rather than rather than tickle it you know Again, I, I don't want to underline the whole painting, so I'm going to imagine that these rocks are going to disappear. Um, and I want to pull the eye back in this way, so they'll probably sort of, uh, disappear around that line. And then there'll be a little bit more of a reflection happening in here somewhere. Uh, just to gauge that again, I will take a little bit of reflective colour and reflect that that light source in there just to just to set that just now. Because that's a C you're tempted to do all your brush strokes this way, but it just look as if you're back at school doing lines. You just, you, you just bore people, you know. You just, you, you just bore people if the whole thing's like, uh, you know. And it's just not. Yes, you want to describe the the horizontal wave motion, but a lot of what you experience is the 
is just the light. And the light happens in a vertical fashion because it's reflecting down the way. So I'm trying not to fall into that trap on it. And this directional light, I'm kind of imagining this peeking out of this cloud, so it's actually going to sort of light up more. The reflection that comes towards you is going to be here. But there's a second reflection that will happen maybe about there. So I want to get rid of my rocks here. A good way to paint anything, and I mean I'm doing a landscape here, I'm a landscape painter, but the techniques here, there's a basic thing happening when I'm approaching painting anything, and that will be think about, don't think about an object on a background all the time i.e. don't always think about the positive shape. Think about the, the vase or the two faces. You want to be seeing the two faces and the vase at the same time so that you give equal, you give equal thought to both of them. So I'm actually painting the areas behind the rocks which is actually the, the water that's coming in here. And up here I'm painting the cloud by painting the background of the cloud, so the cloud comes out of the background. But if you keep the two things going at the one time, it means that your edges get lost. Because um, you pick up a little bit of the positive shape and the negative shape, so if you sort of soften that edge there, you choose that edge to soften, then you want the hard edge there because your colour bleeds through. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up a little bit. It's going to be a little bit darker, a bit less yellow, a tiny bit more purple. The purple will always neutralize the yellow because it's the opposite, so the more of a complementary color you add to the mix, the more it grays it out, the more it desaturates color. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple of wee um, peaks of light coming from behind this. I want to describe some of it, but I don't want to, I want people's imagination to fill in the, the gaps. So I'm painting gaps in the clouds in order to paint the headland. And that's the closest I've come so far to a hard edge, and I'm actually just softening it to make sure it's not going to be too hard. That's just going to be red as a, as a gap in the cloud just there. If we bring the cloud back down, and a gap just there. Take my same dark and then I'm going to set the large mass on the right hand side. And I, I want to warm it up because it, it actually it picks up a bit of warmth from the light source because it's it's kind of facing out that way. Um, so I'm going to add some English red. I don't want it to be as dark as the foreground because I want the depth and I want it to be red as the middle ground here, so I'm just going to check that it isn't. No, it isn't. It's close, but it isn't. Uh, but I can also glaze over to, to brighten it. I don't paint in anything too exact at the first stages. 
rather than draw out a very detailed drawing at the start, I want the drawing to come out later on. So I'm actually just going to put it in the little, put it in little cup so that I don't have to keep squirting it onto the palette. I'm not going to be using any paint just again. And the purpose is going to be only to soften the edge of that. A little bit more. I'm really going to grey out this side. I want this to be moody coming across here. I want this to really be moody and then clear as it goes out to the open water. So it makes a grey. Uh, by just mixing my two colours, the purple and the yellow. Tapered it darker by actually using the paint that's there. Actually, nice and gentle, paint with thin air rather than keeping adding more paint. I'm just using what's on the canvas. So I've softened this, stopped your eye disappearing this way, and I have intensified the brightness on this side. I'm mostly just getting the temperature family at the moment. I fine tune colour at the end uh, if I have to, um, in various degrees with the glazing. Uh, but all I'm all I'm thinking about is warming or cooling the colour at this stage, uh, and the and the opposites of the colours that I'm using. So keeping it to the family of of purples, I'm still keeping to the complement of my 